You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of McKinney versus Davis. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. McKinney, you are here to prove to the defendant, Mr. Davis, that he is your biological father. You say after your mother's tragic death and two recent medical scares of your own, today's results have become more important than ever. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, you say you are certain that you are not the plaintiff's biological father. You claim you didn't know that she even existed until a few years ago and claim another man raised her and he is her biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. McKinney, you say today's results mean more than ever. Please explain. Yes, Your Honor. Um, since I have got diagnosed in 2015 with can ovarian cancer, I felt the need that I need to find out who my children's grandparents are. So if I passed away, I just want them to have a family that loves them. I understand. How long have you believe this was your dad? Well, my mother told me that her ex-husband was my, Michael Davis, the defendant, is my father. Um, also, family members have told me that Michael Davis is my father, and also my birth certificate reads that Michael Davis is my father. So... So your name is on her birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor. So you did sign her birth certificate? No, Your Honor. How did it get there? Um, she had to put it on. Her mom had to put it on there because I wasn't, I wasn't even around or even with her when, when it happens. I didn't even, like I say, I didn't even know she, I even had a daughter. I she object. never even explained to me. I object. By the, back then, they were married. So by law, back then, if you were married, then that's your child's then father. Then that is your... You are the legal father I, to a child born in the marriage. Well... Pretty much, that's what I was told. Yes. And you are correct. I did not realize they were married at the time. So that sheds Thank light you. on the situation. Uh, so it was pain. your understanding that during the time you were born, they were still married? Yes. And so... They lived together. My grandparents bought them a house because they were pregnant with me, what I was told. All right. <clears throat> so, Mr. Davis, you were married to Ms. McKinney's mother how long? One day. Well, I was with her for one day. What? Yes. Y'all yes. lived together. You were married for one day. But they yeah, lived we together. together. Tell the court what happened. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, the day we got married, I took off and we got married and I had to go back to work. And so, once I finished my shift off and I went back home, my house was dark, and when I entered the house and I turned the lights on, I acknowledged my wife and two other guys. She in the bed with two other guys. Did you just testify that on your wedding day, you came home to find your wife in the bed with two other men? Yes, Your Honor. Whoa. I, can I speak And was my that mom? the end of your marriage at that point? At that point, I left. And uh, I left and I went to Hot Spring. I realized that things was not going to work out because things that, you know, I didn't agree with what she was doing. And so I left. And I haven't... And I didn't see her no more after that. So when's the first time you met Mr. Davis? The first I, time you met him? I found him... Um, I was 18. I was dating a young man. And one night he asked me... Um, we were talking about family. He was like, let me see your birth certificate. I'll let him see mine. And he looked at me and was like, I know your mama and your dad. He was, I was like, oh, I don't know my father. I never met him. He was like, you want to meet your dad? And I was like, yes. And they called Michael and told him that it's a young lady here that got a birth certificate here with your name on it. And he asked them, well, who's the mother? And they said, Antigone. So the next day, they came down and um, we met. And so how did that meeting go? Describe what happened to the court. They embraced me at first. Um, everybody accepted me at first as me being his daughter. And then, like, a couple years after that, it just faded. I feel like when my grandmother died, his mother... In which she also believed I was his child. 
after she died, it was like things changed. Like all of a sudden, then I'm not your daughter. You tell other people that I'm not your daughter, but you tell me. You didn't know at first, you had doubts, but then you knew yourself that I was your child. And like, so, privately. did you feel a connection when you saw Mr. Davis for the first time? You said you all hugged. It seemed like they embraced you. I know, just take your time, honey. I, at that time, I looked at his mom and his daughter felt like I looked just like them. I felt like I had met my dad. Like, everything had erased. Actual cases. Her car had come through and slammed me up against the toolbox. There was a torpedo coming at my face. Personal injury court. Cases everyone's going to be talking about. You submitted the pictures to the court. Of... Yes, ma'am. Tell the court who's in these pictures. I see you. Yes. And that's Mr. Davis's other daughter. And when you saw that picture, you felt like, I look just like her. Yeah, but this is the first time I felt that way. You also submitted a picture of you, and this is Mr. Davis's mother. Yes. And you feel like you saw a resemblance there as well. Uh, we, me and my grandma was close. You were? Yes. And she accepted you? Yes. And so when this meeting happened, Mr. Davis, she said she felt at first like everybody accepted her. And then it just faded out. Do you remember this meeting? Yes, Your Honor. I remember the meeting. And I truly, you know, I accepted Amber. But a lot of times, you know, as children coming up, you know, they listen to a lot of stuff that they don't get it from the horse's mouth. They get it from somebody else. You know, and like I told her, you know, get it from the horse's mouth, which is me. Don't get it from nobody else. Cause I didn't don't get want it nobody from else nobody. I got it from nobody. Okay, nobody okay, else. but don't talk in code. Tell right. me, what do you believe she was hearing and what did you tell her instead? What were people feeding her? What were they telling her? A lot of people was feeding her from what I, I heard that I was a daddy. But okay. a lot of people didn't know what was going on back then to make me feel that I wasn't her daddy. But I accepted her regardless of what. You know, a lot of people, they get in your business, but don't know your business. Right. Did you ever say to her, I don't know whether I'm your father, your biological father or not? Or did you just allow her to believe it at that meeting? Your Honor, I never, I never did explain that to her. And, and her reason, I just, they telling me that another man that raised her. But I never have met this guy. Who Dad, raised you? You knew him. Y'all was, y'all used to hang together. Roger Williams, just, he raised me pretty so much. So another man raised you? Yes. Did he also believe, or were you ever told that the other man could also be your biological father? No, I put that in my head. Roger never told me that. Always, it's always been Michael Anthony Davis is your father from everybody. Even other men that's supposed to be the father, they always said Michael Anthony Davis is your father. But, Mr. Davis, you believe that this man we're speaking about, Mr. Williams, could be Ms. McKinney's biological father. Y'all, I'm not, I'm not for sure about that. I don't know. They not, I really don't I know. Too. There's only one way to get a straight answer. He's here, so I'd like to talk Amen. to Mr. Williams. Amen. Jerome, please escort him in the courtroom. Amen. I'm gonna have you go sit up right next to the judge. Mr. Williams, thank you so much for joining us today. I have a few questions for you regarding the paternity of Amber McKinney. You raised her. She testified that you raised her. Yes. What was the nature of your relationship with her? I was been there ever since she was born. I was there in the delivery room with, you know, with, with her mother. Did you believe you were her biological father? What did her mom tell you about her pregnancy? Well, after we'd been together, and then maybe about six months, 
into the relationship. She told me she was pregnant. Did her mother ever tell you you were her biological father? No, uh, her grandmother had said something once before. And what did she say? That she looked it like me. She said she looked like you? Yes. And then me and her mom had problems and I left, you know, when she was about two. When she was about 18, she lived around the corner from me and we didn't know it and we reunited and we've been together ever since. I still treat her like she's my baby, you know. Mr. Davis, you brought a witness today. I'd like to hear from her. Ma'am, will you please stand? State your name for the court. Shauna Davis. You are Mr. Davis's wife. wife. Yes, All Your right. Honor. Thank you for being here, ma'am. You are well aware that she asserts that your husband is her biological father. Yes, Your Honor. When were you first made aware of Ms. McKinney? Um, in 2000, we got a call from Amber. And then we set up the meeting, date and time, whatever, and we went and met her, but we never... I never even doubted... Um, all we went was what she said was on the birth certificate. That's all I can do, because I, you know... She, <laughs> she was already here. What, what else can I do? And so, and from then on, even to now, she's ours. Well, you've been in this courtroom today, so you understand that your husband has testified that he does not believe he is Ms. McKinney's biological father. Why you say that? Just a couple of days ago, you told me something different. Like, that's what really hurts me. Like, I'm lying to me. <laughs> Just tell me the truth. One day you say, oh, I believe it is, then, oh, I don't know, then. You ain't never not once told me that you felt like you wasn't my dad. You we never doubted that she that. wasn't his daughter. Amen. There was no doubt. And <laughs> you Until said we... amen? Yes, ma'am. Because <laughs> why? <laughs> you say amen when you agree. Well... But your testimony is opposite of your wife's. And at this point, I know how you feel, Ms. McKinney. I am here now bearing witness to the confusion and the... I mean, the, the, the polar opposite conversations and statements that are being said. And that's emotionally traumatizing. And that's why I run away. That's why I leave. And all you really want to know... It's not is for me... Just, can I just say this? Yes. It's not for me. I want to know for my kids. What if I'm dead? Where they gonna go? Like, what? And you I have, know. Well, I had first stage cancer. What if I found out it was second stage, third stage? What are they supposed to do? I understand that. And you deserve the answer, as well as your children. Yes, ma'am. I have those answers for you. Jerome? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of McKinney versus Davis, when it comes to 32-year-old Amber McKinney, If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Mr. Williams, you are not her father. The next result reads as follows. In the case of McKinney versus Davis, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Davis, you are not the father. <laughs> 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 Love you. Amber, I love you. Baby. I'm sorry.
sorry. I'm putting you through this. <laughs> no. You have nothing to be sorry about in this moment. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you were told something as a child consistently, and you needed to know if it was true. I know this is difficult, and I know this was not the answer you expected, but at the end of the day, you at least have the truth. Take care of yourself, take it one day at a time, and know that you've done nothing wrong. And everything that has happened thus far, although painful, has led to this progress that we've made today. And we're gonna make more one day at a time, okay? Amen. I want you all to go talk to Dr. Jeff. I want you all to talk about how to move forward, how to stay in contact, I hope you all see this young woman needs your help. <laughs> and I hope you will continue to be there for her. Okay? I wish you all the very best of luck. I'm gonna check on you. All right, Amber? Take care of yourself. Court is adjourned. <laughs>